In today's photo deconstruction, I'm going to take you behind the scenes of a pop art beauty shoot inspired by Roy Lichtenstein. Hey everybody, Lindsay Adler here. And one of the places that I love to get inspiration is other artists. I get inspired by photographers, but also painters and cinematographers and sculptors. And for this beauty shoot in particular, I was inspired by pop artist Roy Lichtenstein. Now this shoot was actually done for one of my intensive workshops called Timeless. Now in the Timeless workshops, I team up with photographer Chris Knight and we are inspired by other artists. That's the entire concept of the workshop is that we look to other artists and cinematographers and painters and sculptors, others who have had an influence on art today. We take pieces of what we're attracted to and then infuse it with our own work for a modern twist. Now my work usually has a little bit of a fashion shoot flair. Chris a lot of times is a little bit more true to the original references. And so this was my take on Roy Lichtenstein. I wanted to do a beauty shoot. Now in preparation for creating this image, I went through and I tried to distill a couple of the core ingredients that I would want to uh, infuse into my work if it was meant to feel like Lichtenstein. So first of all, I wanted to use really bold, maybe triadic colors, red, yellow, and blue. If you look at his work, those are colors that you see repeated over and over again. Now, as I was looking at the female characters, they typically had super saturated hair, a yellow, a red, maybe a blue, the colors that I was referencing before. So we went ahead and we bought a yellow wig and then had it styled in a vintage hairstyle, which is very reminiscent of his work. Then, as I looked at his work, I saw that many of the backgrounds were really graphic. If you know his work, there's a lot of that little point texture throughout. And so I teamed up with makeup artist Yvonne McGinnis. She is insanely talented. Not only is she an incredible makeup artist, but she's a fabulous painter. And so she actually came in several days before the shoot and painted on a canvas roll. So she painted the incredible background that you see here. They told her that I wanted something to frame the subject. So instead of just being points on the background, something that would give us a graphic visual uh, element to work with. And so her painting was inspired by Lichtenstein's Pop, uh, which is one of his famous pieces. So, so far we've got the wig, I've got the background, but then it's time for the makeup, right? So the makeup was going to actually be inspired by the pieces themselves and a lot of the emotions you would see in the pieces. So very often the women were sad or melodramatic, sometimes even having tears painted. And so that's what you see in the final piece. We actually uh, face painted or uh, Yvonne face painted these subjects to look very graphic and illustrative. So it, it, it looks just like an illustration here. Next up, I grabbed a prop. I grabbed this uh, red phone, bought it for cheap on Amazon. We painted on it to look like the uh, carved out or painted elements. And then of course the styling. My wardrobe stylist Canon decided that a good approach would be to take a blue top, but then over top of that put a raincoat, which had this uh, black ribbing because that made it look like the painting, which I thought was brilliant and all of the elements really come together. So we've got the background, the hair and makeup, the props, the wardrobe. And so then of course it's the lighting. So let's pop over and see what it looks like. All right, so here's a behind the scenes and you can see the size of that canvas background. I decided that that was probably the size that we would need in order to frame the subject without her hanging over the bold lines too much. So we have the background behind her, but let's actually begin with our main light. So the main light that we have centered on the subject here is a white beauty dish. The reason I chose a white beauty dish is it is a soft and flattering light, but it also has a little pop to it. And I know that for this final piece, I want the colors to pop. I want it to be a very poppy image. And I don't want that much shadow, which is why it is centered on the scene. Related to that, related to not wanting to have too much shadow, I need a fill light as well. I want to fill in the shadows. Fundamentally, if this is meant to be an illustration where the shadows have already been painted on physically, I don't need shadow. So what we've done is add another fill light from below, which is a beauty dish, white again, but this time it has a grid. The reason we added a grid to this light is so that I could control where the fill is hitting. I didn't want this fill casting a shadow of the subject onto the background. So we've got a white beauty dish centered above, a white beauty dish with a grid centered below. And lastly, this one's optional, but I added a light to the background, specifically a 20 degree grid. It's pointed just behind the subject's head. And the reason I did that is she has a yellow wig on a yellow background and I didn't want things to blend in too much. So adding a 20 degree grid, which is kind of a focused glowing light would give just a little bit of separation. 
By the way, for this wig, it wasn't purchased like this. We shaped it and then Yvonne actually painted on the wig. So that's what gives it that, that black illustrative uh, result. So before we move on to the final shots, let's take a look at what I shot with. For my camera settings, you'll notice that I was shooting at F11 ISO 400. And the reason I shot at F11 is I didn't think there was any benefit to having a narrower depth of field. In fact, having more depth of field, having the background in focus was probably better to make this look like a graphic illustration. Fall off of focus wouldn't really make sense to the final result I was trying to achieve. All right, so all of that being said, let's look at what was captured in camera. Now, one of the things I want you to notice is that this shot looks like it's lacking a little bit of pop. It looks a little bit flat. Now, one of the reasons is that this was during the workshop and we had three sets going on at once. And in one of the sets we were using haze. Well, of course, you can't really control where haze goes, so it permeates the entire room and haze decreases contrast, including on this set. And so my entire point is I wanted something poppy and colorful and graphic, but the haze was getting rid of some of that contrast. So unfortunately, I knew I'd have to compensate in post. So this is what we have straight out of camera. Now, a couple of things I noticed. Uh, some of the lines that are on the background and on the subject that are black, they should be darker. They should be more defined. But some of the light is reflecting off of those surfaces, plus we have the haze. So I knew I wouldn't need to increase contrast. Also, the colors, they're meant to be just super saturated, simple, red, blue, yellow. And so I knew I would want to go in and individually saturate each of those colors. So as I analyze this, I think a lot of what I'm going to do is play around with contrast as well as saturation. I'm just going to go in and like control every tone, every color. So this is what was captured in camera. And then I have my processing in camera raw. So basically the biggest difference between what I captured in camera and as I was processing it was contrast. I just popped a lot of contrast, a lot of clarity, a little bit of dehaze, which gave me a much poppier result, which is what I was going for. But I don't think the colors were saturated enough. This isn't what I was really going for. So the final stage really needed to be done in Photoshop. I really needed to go in and darken the black lines, pull out the saturation of the, or increase the saturation of the reds and the yellows. And that would need to be done carefully by hand on each part of the frame. A couple of other things is, we forgot. I didn't paint any black on the hands and I wanted to that to look like an illustration as well. So I wanted to go in and paint the hands uh, and I would do that in post. I also found that this little part of the coat in the bottom left was a distraction. I didn't like how much brighter the top of the frame was compared to the bottom of the frame. If it's meant to be flattened in, like an illustration, it should be even throughout. Um, I also thought the saturation on the lips, for example, should pop. The skin should maybe be a little bit lighter. And then we did paint the wig, but I wanted to go back through and maybe trace over those lines to be a little bit more defined. So in camera, this is camera raw. And then this is what I did in Photoshop. So you'll notice that there's quite a lot, but it's a lot of little things. So first of all, notice how much more saturated the reds and yellows are. Notice how all of the blacks are much darker, uh, have a, a lot richer tone to them. I also went in and went over all of those lines on the hair, which makes it look much more graphic. I liquefied the hair a little bit to be more dramatic shape. You'll also notice that I liquefied the background. The way the subject leaned forward and turned her head, it made her no longer centered. And I felt like the composition was a little bit off, a little bit too heavy to the right hand side of the frame. And so the way I compensated is I liquefied in the left hand side. So things felt a little bit more balanced. You can see I lightened the bottom of the frame. And I also lightened up uh, just behind the head and then darkened around. So the subject really does pop. So here what was captured in camera and then here's what was done in post. So this is an example where Photoshop did a lot, but none of it was complicated. All it was was lightening and darkening things, changing saturation and then drawing on black lines. None of it was complicated, but it was all based on purpose. What was I trying to achieve in this shot? High contrast, super saturated, really clean. And so that was my goal and what I tried to achieve in Photoshop. So I think the results are super fun. And of course, the subject's expression went a long way in selling this as a Liechtenstein. Like it really brings you in because she is giving us such a dramatic mood. All of the pieces work together. The background, the hair, the makeup, the styling, the expression, the post-processing. And this is why having a concept is so important. And so in our timeless workshop, 
what we do is for each concept like this, we go in and we talk about our inspiration, where the inspiration came from, a little bit about the artist, how it helped inform our creative decisions, and then how we put it all together to really bring together that final result. So if you'd like to join us for one of these workshops, be sure to visit learnwithlindsay.com and check out the workshop section. And of course, if you want to see the gear used in the making of these images, check out the links in the description below, as well as adorama.com. Now, by the way, I have a lot of photo deconstructions just like this one. So if you've enjoyed this, be sure to like and subscribe. See you next time, guys.